Well, Al, you predicted 3-0. It was only 3-1. What's, what, what's gone wrong? Yeah, I got that wrong again. Then. I'm <laughs> sick of getting stuff wrong. Um, yeah, I, did, I said 3 and I just felt it was you know, last game of the season, at home, big crowd. You know, a big push for the boys. And uh, I just felt that today we'd get a few goals. Um, and it turned out 3-1, but I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm not bothered about the one conceded today, to be fair. I've got to talk about Phil Jevons. I mean, he's had such an impact on County this season. That script was written for him today, wasn't it? You, I, I honestly don't know about football anymore in terms of uh, what you predict, what you can't predict, what should happen, what won't happen, what will happen. You know, what I mean, he's gone through so much. He's been he's he's, um, he's been immense for us this year. Every, you know, I, I can't remember him having a poor game. You know, he's had an influence in every single game, and today, you know, came up with the goods again and. It must have been written for him, as you say. It's brilliant. I feel, you know, I feel really proud of him. I know you were planning to bring him off a couple of minutes before the end. Mm. I, I, I guess that changed when he scored his second goal and he was on a hat trick. It did. Um, after he scored the goal, I went up to congratulate him and I said, "Listen, I'm, I'm taking you off." And he says, uh, "Oh no, you're not." <laughs> <laughs> so and he had this bit of a steel look in his eye, and I thought, well, you know, why have a scrap here? We might as well let him on, and he can win this one. <laughs> Heading towards half time, it wasn't gone all your way. You, you'd had a lot of the play, a lot of chances. It looked as if it was going to be another, another another day when the ball just wouldn't go in. But then, two goals in quick succession, right, to, right, right before the half time whistle. Yeah, we've suffered with stuff like that mm. in, the, in the season. You know, you you play well and then <clears throat> you have a dip. And I don't know. Today, I just felt, I just felt if, if you know, even if they scored, I just felt it was going to come good. I don't know. It's a good feel about the place and the dressing room before the game, mm. and. Um, I don't think it was a good goal, you know. For us, we had a chance to get to the player. It was a great strike, not taking anything away from that. But then, as you say, two quick goals turn the game. Um, people start to play with a bit less fear. Um, confidence starts to come a little bit. They'll try a, a, an extra touch, which they might not have done in under a one niller down. And um, you know, things change for the better. In terms of um, the second half, there was one sour note, and that, of course, was the sending off of, of Carl Jacobs. What was your view of that? Um, well, it came in for a challenge, the ball went loose. I think it was in the favour of, of the opposition's player, if I've got to be perfectly honest. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it was malicious, I think it was a late stretch that shown the studs and, uh, you know, if I'm being perfectly honest, I think didn't give the referee much alternative. Mm. You know, people around him, in front of the dugout, same scenario as Tunji um, a few months ago. I don't think, uh, I, I think he got it right, but mm. having said that, I, Knowing Kyle, it's not a malicious thing, it's just just a bit of a late challenge. Bobby Lofthouse as well came off midway through the first half. What's the news on him? Well, actually, he tweaked it in the warm up, but um, Roger gave him a quick rub before we came out for the game and, and asked how he was. Said, yeah, you know, he thinks he could get through it. Um, but the pace of the game and, you know, you're stretching and you, you're checking and turning, it takes its toll. So, unfortunately, we had to. Um, so Bobby, you know, would like to have kept him. I thought he was, he did well last week, but that's what happens, you know. Um, he's probably a, bit, a little bit disappointed today, not playing the full game, but it can't be helped. Going into this game, obviously you'd had that run of clean sheets, terrific. You know, every, everything defensively was fine, but obviously you weren't scoring goals and you weren't winning games. How important was it to to you today and to the team to get that victory in front of you know more than three thousand today? Absolutely vital. We had to score. I felt if we'd have got another nil nil today. Even though it might have been a positive in one respect, I don't think it would have been viewed as a positive. Yeah. Um, I think you know the fans here, last game of the season, they need something to take home, and I think it was only right that you know we should dish up um, a victory for them. They've been waiting long enough. They've been waiting long enough for goals, and today we got them. And um, you know, I hope we've made a few people a bit happier than um, we have done over the last few games. I know you came into the job. At a strange point, really, when Ian Bogey walked away, you've now got a pre-season and then a full season to go at it. Are you convinced that you want to be the man to, to take Stockport County forward next season? Who won't want a manager? Is the answer in that? I think so. It is. It, it, it's terrific that you've got this time now, though, isn't it? Because yeah. you didn't have. I mean, you, you had some say last summer, but not 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 a terrific amount. No, I'd, I'd just say with a couple of players, obviously, you know, bringing young Reese in at that age, it was a bit yeah. bit of a difficult. But um, Ian actually phoned me yesterday and wished me well for, which I thought was a great, a great touch for, from him. But if you're talking about managing this club, I mean, it's, it's just it's, it's a dream job. I'm a fan in the dugout, 
and um, you know I'm privileged to to manage it. this club. Great supporters, great dressing. If you go in there now, and that's you know, who wouldn't want to be a part of that? No, the answer to that is um, without a doubt. We started with Phil Jevons. We might as well finish with him as well. And I, I guess it's a dilemma for you now. How do you replace Phil Jevons? Hmm. <laughs> 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 it's obviously going to be difficult. But um, we've known about this for near enough two months now. Mm. So you know, we we haven't been sat on our backsides We're looking at people that um, can give us that sort of vision, that touch, in particular that area of the, of the park. You know. But um, we were we're working on um, speaking to quite. A lot of people, a lot, of, a lot of meetings we've got over the next two weeks, and then hopefully we, the team will shape up in first two or three weeks of May. Well, at least a percentage of the team. Uh, I said on on the interview the other day that you know we've got to leave a little bit of scope for the back end for people that you know we don't want to spend all the budget. Mm. Um, but it's going to be difficult to replace. Getting back to your question, it's been remarkable. Uh, you know, as I say, he's been the biggest influence I've known at this club for a good few years. You know, what a single player that's contributed so much um, during one season. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty, it's remarkable. He's the Player of the Year awards tonight as well. He's he's probably not going to go home empty-handed tonight, is he? I think he might be in with a chance of getting something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations! Thank you, Ty. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.